Functions are the basic building blocks that make up any good application. It allows us to divide up larger portions of code into smaller ones, and it helps with reusability because we can make use of sort of complex functions in multiple places within our code without having to write the same code over and over again. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a simple program that uses a function that basically allows us to pass two numbers and then sum them together. So just before this void main up here, we're going to declare a new function. We're going to declare the return type as double, saying we want to return a double value from this function. Our function is called sum, and then within these brackets, we're going to declare what we want to be able to pass into this function, which is a double value. We're just going to say a, it can be whatever you want. It's a placeholder for a variable that you will pass in in the future. Then we'll take a double b, which again is another placeholder variable. And then we'll simply return a plus b. Because we've declared that we are going to be returning a type, we need to use a return statement and return a type of double based on these two values. Because these are both doubles that are coming in and we're adding them together, we don't need to do any specific casting of variables, and we know that the output of this return statement will always be a double. Next, down in main, we're just going to replace this print statement with a call to the sum function, two open brackets, and within here we need to pass two double values that we want to sum together. So in this case, we'll do a 10.0, and we need to put the dot zero there because if we don't put a dot zero, this variable is considered to be an integer. Then we'll do a comma and do 20. And we're basically saying here we want to add these two together and print them out. So we should get a result of 30.0. And there we go. So that's a simple function. We can actually simplify this a little bit more and kind of make it a, we can make it run on one line. I'll show you how to do that. We can do a, say now we want to square a number. So we want to, we want to take a number and multiply it by itself. So we'll do double square open bracket. We want to take in a double of x. And this is where we'd normally do our two brackets there, but we can actually make this a little bit easier on ourselves and simply use a arrow. And then it'll infer that we want to return something. And that return is going to be the x that we pass it in multiplied by itself. And that's a lot easier than that one line there. And then if we want to run that, so we can just go print square and say we want to go nine times nine, we can pass in a double value of nine. We run it and we should get 81. Fantastic. Now let's talk about default values. When we have a function that we want to give a set of arguments, but we, we want some arguments to default to, to an unknown if we don't fill them out ourselves. So what we're going to do is we're going to clear up some of this old code and I'll explain to you what I mean. Say we had a print message function where we're going to pass, we're going to want a string from message. We're going to want a string from, and then say we want to also take in the to field, but we want to make it default to unknown if it's not set. So we can go string two within square brackets is equal to unknown. We'll open this up and go print message from two. So basically this is what we'll do. It will take in a message, it will take in the from field and then it will potentially take in a to field, but if it doesn't, it will fill it with a string unknown instead. So let's call this function from within our program. We'll go print message, hello world. Oops. So hello world is our message. Then our from field is going to be John, and our to field is going to be Mike. We'll run this just to make sure it works. Sorry, my mistake. I've put print here and I should be putting print message. We'll run that and we should see hello world from John to Mike. 
And same goes with if we go print message, how are you doing as our message? And in our from field, we're gonna put Mike, and then we're not going to specify the to field, and it should still run, but we're gonna get how are you doing from Mike to unknown, because it's filled this field out for us because we haven't declared it. You can also use a named argument, and a named argument within a function, just basically these named parameters are put into braces, uh, and it, it kind of gives you some context about what you need to pass in to the function. So for example, get rid of that and we'll go void print person. I'm just gonna speed up the video while I type this out. Okay, so we've written our print person function, which basically names the arguments that we are going to expect to be passed in, and then we can reference them within this these statements here that we want to actually execute. Now we're going to call these functions by going print person name John. And we're just going to put this onto a new line to clean things up. And see how we're actually declaring what we want to call. So see this name here, we can actually f basically type name here and say that we want to call this field here. We want to, we want to set this field. So then we could go age 27, job, app dev, is married, false. And then we'll try to run this. And we get an output that's pretty like this. We could also go print name keep typing print, but I should type print person, name, John, job, app dev. We didn't specify two fields, but we can show you that those null fields did get set because Dart will always assign a variable that hasn't been assigned itself as a null. And then finally, we'll talk about functions within functions, which is Kind of a confusing topic, confusing thing to think about, but it's also kind of simple because functions are, you can think of a function as being very, very similar to a variable in the fact that you can, you can actually pass uh, functions as returns from other functions. So we could have a double add, double A, double B, returning A plus B. We can declare a function as like a variable, so declaring like a function called make adder takes in a variable or a value of double and it returns a function x or returns a function with the value variable x that we pass in of add the value x. And then to call this, Final add five is equal to make add a five point five point zero for example. And then we're gonna print the add five. So this is this is a function, very important to think about. So now we've got a add five function where we set the value the first value here. So this value of five. And now we're going to accept the second value of x. So we're gonna give it, for example, we'll give it uh, 10. So what this means is that we should end up with, uh, well, we've taken in a five plus 10, <laughs> should equal 15. Uh, and then if we print the add seven and we'll give it a value of 10 too, we should end up with 17. This is a more complex sort of uh, feature of Dart and a lot of the languages. Uh, it's not one that we will use very often, but it's one that's kind of interesting to be made aware of because thinking of a function as similar to a variable, it blows your mind. You can use it in some really interesting places. Cool. Now in the next video, we're gonna look at lists, uh, lists arrays and maps and sort of see how, uh, how we can manipulate data within groups or sets. Uh, so I'll see you there.